Hello! Today we are going to do section 5.3, which is covering the unit circle. Some of you may have been introduced to the unit circle last year in secondary math 2, um, but if you did, it probably was really briefly and you didn't go into it um, for very long, so you probably don't remember very much of it. If you didn't learn it at all last year, that's okay. Um, not all teachers teach it in secondary 2, but we will get a lot of use out of it this year, so you'll make up for some lost time. Um, but the unit circle you will use a lot this year in trigonometry, and then going on in future math classes, um, you'll use it quite a bit too, especially if you go into calculus. So the unit circle is just a circle with a radius of one unit, so we call it the unit circle. Um, it provides a connection between the trig ratios that we learned, um, so like SOHCAHTOA, where we do sine is opposite over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and also the trig functions in general, just sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, we can place it on a coordinate plane, so if we have our x and y axis here, um, and then also use our right triangle trigonometry that we reviewed in 5.1, um, just to find our basic trig ratios. Any right triangle with a hypotenuse of 1 can be drawn in any quadrant of the unit circle. So remember, if we have our axes here, quadrant 1 is the top right, quadrant 2 is the top left, quadrant 3 is the bottom left, and quadrant 4 is the bottom right. So if we have these little right triangles that we draw, um, we can kind of combine the right triangle trig from section 1, 5.1, um, to help us create this unit circle. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through and derive, or I'm going to show you how you can find the unit circle. Um, you don't need to do this every time. It's mostly, I'm just hoping that if I show you where the unit circle comes from, it's going to be easier for you to memorize, which you will eventually have to memorize the unit circle. So, um, before we get started, let's just kind of review. We have our little trig ratios, like sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Um, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So, if I put a little right triangle on my unit circle here, and think of it as being an x and y axis, I am going over x amount and up y amount. Well, I could think of that as a coordinate point, x comma y. Well, in the unit circle, that represents cosine of your angle. Remember this little symbol is theta. And then sine would be your y. So cosine of theta would be like your x value. Sine of theta is your y value. Where theta is this little central angle on the inside of the triangle. So the nice thing is about a circle in general though is that it is extremely symmetrical. So if I find this point in this quadrant here, I can reflect it across to this quadrant here. The only difference is in this quadrant my signs are positive for x and positive for y. But when I come across into this section my x's become negative. So I'm going to have this sign pattern negative for x's but positive for y. So I would just take whatever this value I get for this point is and I can move it over to here but just change the signs. Same if I bring it straight down. I'm going to have the same value except in this quadrant both x and y are negative and I can also bring it straight across to quadrant 4. In this quadrant the x values are positive, the y's are negative. So the nice thing is, because the unit circle is a circle, and it's so symmetrical, I really only need to know the first quadrant, memorize this first quadrant here, and then I can reflect it across, down, and across to get the whole circle. So for any point x, y on the unit circle, the x coordinate is the cosine of the angle, and the y coordinate is the sine of the angle. So, and then you can reflect that using these different sign relationships. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the special triangles that we reviewed in 5.1, 
Remember, 45-45-90 triangle has a pattern of x, x, x squared of 2, where these two sides um, are the same length because you have an isosceles triangle. And then a 30-60-90 triangle has a relationship of x on the short side, 2x on the long side, the hypotenuse, and x squared of 3 on the middle side. So... Here we have the 45, 45, 90 triangle. So if I'm going X over and Y up and I have my hypotenuse of one, remember I can place those little formulas on here, X, X, X squared of two. And then the only number that I know since it's a unit circle is that this hypotenuse equals one. So I'm going to take the formula for the hypotenuse, x squared of 2, and I'm going to set it equal to the 1. And then we're going to solve for x, because I want to know these two lengths, which are x long. So to do that, I need to get rid of the square root of 2 by dividing by the square root of 2. So those cancel. But remember, in math, we don't like square roots in the bottom. So to get rid of them, we times them by their themselves on the top and the bottom of the fraction. Um, and we do that because the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 just equals 2. And then on the top, 1 times the square root of 2 is just the square root of 2. So we just found that x equals the square root of 2 over 2. So remember, that's since we have a 45, 45, 90, these two sides are equal to each other. So we have the square root of 2 over 2 is this length over and this length over as well. So we're going over and up the same amount. So that means this point is square root of 2 over 2 over for x and square root of 2 over 2 up for y. So we just found one of our points. Now let's try doing the 30, 60, 90. So the 30 degree is up here. So if the 60 degree is down here, our short side is on the bottom. This would be x big. There's already an x here. And then if I put the other formulas, if this short side is x, the long side is 2x long. And then the medium length side is x times the square root of 3. So just like we did on the last one, I'm going to take the number they gave us and set it equal to the formula for the 30, 60, 90 side. So 2x equals 1. So to solve for x, I just divide by 2. So x equals 1 half. So that's going to be the short side, but then we don't have an isosceles here. So this longer side, I still need to find. So for x square root of 3, I just need to plug the 1 half in. I would get 1 half times the square root of 3, which if we think of this as just being over a 1, that gives you 1 times the square root of 3 on the top, and then 2 times 1 on the bottom, which is 2. So this side would equal a square root of 3 over 2. So this would be your x and this would be your y. So my little coordinate point, I went over 1 half for x and I went up square root of 3 over 2 for y. So that would be your little point. So note that that was the 60 degree angle. So we can also use the 30, 60, 90. Oh, it looks like my circle didn't print here. Let me draw one really quick. I can also use the 30, 60, 90 with the 30 degree angle being on the inside. So it's like we flip that little triangle on its side. That's a really bad picture, but you guys get the idea, right? So before the 60 degree, the bigger angle was here, um, but now we're taking the littler angle. So I, instead I'm kind of flipping this triangle on its side. So that means this would be the 60 degree up here. So that just is going to change. Um, this is still x and y, and our hypotenuse is still 1, going from the center out as a radius. Um, but thinking of the 30, 60, 90, the short side is now here. So this will be x. And the middle length side is on the x-axis now. So this would be x squared root of 3 for the formula. And then our hypotenuse is still 2x. So since 1 is still equal to 2x, we still divide by 2, and we get that x equals 1 half. So 
just like before, if I plug this one half in, my short side is now the Y value. So this will be one half. And if I take one half and plug it into here, I'm going to get one half times the square root of three, which just equals the square root of three over two. So look at these values. They just flipped from this triangle. So it was one half for X and square root of three over two for Y. Now it's square root of three over two for X and one half for Y. So our value on our little point here for X and Y just flipped. So the, the square root of three over two is the X value and one half is the Y value. So that's kind of convenient. So um, what we have now are the 30, 45 and 60 degree points. If I go and put all of those on the unit circle, 45 degree goes right in the middle. Um, the 30 degree is a little bit smaller. And then the 60 degree is a little bit bigger. So let's say this is 45, this is 60 degrees, this is 30 degrees. So we found three of the points now. Our 30 degree angle we just found, that was this one up here. This would be the square root of three over two comma one half. The 45 degree angle is the square root of two over two comma square root of two over two. And then this one is just the opposite of this one. We have one half comes first and square root of three over two comes second. So um, the other two points that we can find is this point. If we think of this as just being an X and Y axis, this one just went over one and up zero. So the coordinate would just be one zero. And this one, if I go straight up, we can find this point as well. I'm over zero, but up one. Just thinking of this just as a plain old X, Y axis. So the nice thing is, again, we found the first quadrant, which essentially means you found the entire unit circle, because now all you have to do is reflect over here reflect down, reflect across again, and you make this nice little rectangle where everything from this point just reflects, reflects, reflects. You just need to now pay attention to the signs in each quadrant. This would be negative plus, this will be negative, negative, and this will be positive, negative, where right now all of these are positive, positive. So what we're going to do is actually put that onto a big unit circle really quick. So hopefully you printed out this lovely big unit circle that was in the notes as well. And I'm going to go ahead and label the points that we just found. So this will be our 30 degrees. And try and write really nicely on this because you will be using this all of this unit and also all of the next unit. So it's not going anywhere anytime soon. So on this one, we found that the square root of three over two is the X value and one half is the Y. And then square root of two over two comma square root of two over two. And then this one was one half comma square root of three over two. And then at here at zero, think of this as being like zero degrees, we're just a flat line. This was zero or one comma zero. I already messed up on my pretty in a circle. And then this one up here, think of this as being a right angle. We're coming all the way up. So this would be 90 degrees. So our point here is we are over zero up one. So it's at the point zero comma one and then again this quadrant x is positive y is positive but what we're going to do is now just flip it all to this quadrant where x becomes negative but y is still positive so if you want you could take like a ruler and draw a nice straight line um but let's do this 30 degree one first we're just going to bring this straight across so this point is going to come over with it, but I'm making my x negative. So if this is the square root of three over two, I'm now going to have a negative square root of three over two, but y still will be positive. So it'll just stay a one half. Same with this one. I'm gonna use a piece of paper as my ruler because I don't have one here at home. 
but I'm a little OCD about the lines connecting. <laughs> so this one, again, we're just moving this point over, but using this sign pattern. So I will have a negative square root of two over two comma square root of two over two. And then this guy, the 60 degrees, will bring over. And then again, just switch the sign pattern. So we have 1 half square root of 3 over 2. This will be negative 1 half square root of 3 over 2. And then we'll bring all of these points down into this quadrant. The third quadrant, both x and y are negative. So bringing this point straight down, I'm just going to eyeball it. Everything will now be po or negative, so we'll have negative square root of 3 over 2, negative 1 half. Bringing the second point straight down, we will have negative square root of 2 over 2, comma negative square root of 2 over 2. And then this point will come straight down, giving us a negative 1 half and negative square root of 3 over 2. And then our last quadrant, quadrant 4, x is now turned positive, but y is staying negative. So let's bring this guy over. So the, my x value will now turn positive, so I have a positive 1 half, but y will stay in negative square root of 3 over 2. Now let's bring this guy over x turns to a positive square root of 2 over 2, y stays negative. Bring this guy over. We have a positive square root of 3 over 2, and then a negative 1 half. And if you like everything to be nice like me, these also work reflecting straight up and down. So you can also connect the lines if you want up here just so that it looks nice and pretty. So that is um, how you get all of the points going around your unit circle. So how it works is, remember, cosine is like your x value and sine is like your y value. So let's say I want to know what is cosine of 30 degrees. Well, if this is my 30 degree line and this is my cosine value is the x value, cosine of 30 degrees would be square root of 3 over 2. Or if I wanted to know what is sine of 45 degrees. I would go to 45 degrees and sine is the y value, so it would be square root of 2 over 2. Um, or you could also do like 90 degrees or all the way around. So let's go and finish putting the degrees all the way around. Usually people are pretty um, comfortable with degrees since we kind of use degrees in our you know day-to-day -day life. Um, radians are the harder ones to know, but let's do the degrees first. So we have 0, 30, 45, 60, 90. You'll notice these bigger chunks are going by 30 degrees. So if this is 90 and I go 30 more, this will be 120 degrees. These smaller amounts are going by 15. So if this is 120, I add 15 and I get to 135 degrees. And then if I add 15 more, 135 plus 15 is 150. And then 150 plus 30 is 180 degrees and if we keep going 180 plus 30 is 210 plus 15 is 225 plus another 15 is 240 plus 30 more down to the bottom this is 270 degrees plus 30 is 300 um we'll write sideways 300 degrees so that will make this 315 degrees and this would be 330 degrees and then finishing off this would be 360 degrees down here think of this as zero going to 360 so zero and 360 they share the same point so now that's our degrees but we also use radians quite a bit in math so with the radians, um, these usually aren't <laughs> quite as, um, like, they don't come as natural as the degrees do to people because we don't use radians. Um, this is, like, the first time you guys have ever seen them. 
So you probably will just have to memorize these. There are tricks to getting the radians or patterns that you can recognize. I'll put some um, videos on Canvas for you guys to use from YouTube that are kind of like tips and tricks for memorizing the unit circle. Um, but really, like the best thing that helps me to think of it is think of like measuring cups, you know, when you're baking cookies. Um, those kind of fractions and measuring cups will help you with the fractions and the radians going around. So, um, I usually start by doing, remember there's two pies total in a circle. One pie is at 180 degrees. So I'm going to put the pie, um, we'll just put it on the inside here. This is pie, which means two pie is at 360. So this would be two pie is equal to 360. Well, if I cut a pie in half, so this is pie, this would be half of a pie. So this would be pie over two or pie halves. So if this is one half, this is a whole pie, then this would be three halves. So this would be three pi over two for the radian. And as you're labeling this, let's try to be kind of consistent. So I have the degrees on the outside. I'm going to put the radians on the inside of those degrees. So I do kind of like the quarter marks first. You can think of this as being zero pi. So zero pi and two pi share the same. So we have zero pi, half a pi, a whole pi, three halves a pi, and then two pi. So then I go and do the quarter marks. So if this is half a pi, well, this would be half of the half, which is a quarter. So this is pi fourths. So this is one fourth, one half, this would be three fourths. So three pi over four. Then this would be like four fourths or one. So then this guy would be five fourths. So now I'm just kind of counting by fourths as I go along. So this is five fourths. This would be six fourths or three halves, which that reduces to. So then this would be seven fourths, kind of doing those quarter mark lines. So those are all like the 45 degree angles in the middle of each circle. So then the next lines, these are going to be kind of more your ob shaped ones. I like to count these ones going by sixths. So this first one at 30 degrees is pi over six. So if this is one sixth, every 30 degrees is going to be another sixth. So this is one sixth, this would be two sixths, but two over six reduces to one third. So we're left with pi thirds. Then this would be, um, this is one six, two six, this would be three six, which reduces to one half. This would be four six, but four over six reduces to two thirds. So this would be two pi over three. Then this would be five pi over six. This would be six pi over six, which is just pi. So then this would be seven pi over six down here. And then, 8 pi over 6, but 8 over 6 reduces to 4 over 3, so we get 4 pi thirds. Then this this was um, 8 pi over 6, this would have been 9 pi over 6, but that reduces to 3 halves. So then this would be 10 pi over 6, but 10 over 6 reduces to 5 thirds, so we get 5 pi thirds. And if this was 10, then this would be... 11 pi over 6. So I know that the these ones are definitely the trickier ones to memorize. Um, again, there's tricks to getting those ones. You'll probably start to notice um, like patterns in the denominators. Um, another trick I can show you though is in those these little rectangles that we drew, notice that they all have the same denominator on the radians. This is pi over 6, if I come straight across, we have 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6. And then if we go in this one, we have pi fourths, 3 pi fourths, 5 pi fourths, 7 pi fourths. So all the fourths share that box. If I go to the 60 degree one, here's a pi thirds, 2 pi thirds, 4 pi thirds, and 5 pi thirds. 
so that's one other way you can kind of memorize them is just make sure they're all sharing you know the same box as you're reflecting so um that is the unit circle hopefully that kind of makes a little bit of sense <laughs> i know it's kind of intimidating let me zoom out a little bit so you can see it all at once oh i forgot to do these two so just like this was one and zero and zero and one just treat this right as your x-axis so i'm going back negative one up zero so the point here is negative one zero almost forgot these guys and then going down i'm going down one um but over zero so my x is zero but i'm in negative one for y so there's those points as well so you don't want to forget those guys but as you go through on your unit circle you should have a radian a degree and then your ordered pair for your cosine and sine value um, on each one so make sure you have all your radians going around all of your degrees going around and then all of your ordered pairs going around at each point and that's unit circle um so to actually use the unit circle now again we're going to use this quite a bit on that last page of your notes you should have this page right here um i'll show you what to do so once you have your unit circle, it can be used to find exact values. So not decimal points, but when they say exact values, that means using like square roots instead of a decimal point um, to find the answer or the ratios that go to those angles that we use a, a lot in our special triangles, 30, 45, 65, 90. Um, and then if we use them all the way around. So what you're going to do is they'll give you either a sine or a cosine. Remember, on the ordered pairs for x and y that responds to cosine being the x value of the angle and y is the sine value of the angle so if i want sine of 135 degrees i would pull out my unit circle i would find 135 degrees and then sine is the y value so i would take that y value right here so that would just equal the square root of 2 over 2 Versus if I put that into my calculator, it's going to pop out a decimal, which they want the exact value, not decimal value. So you want this one. For this one, cosine 5 pi over 4, they gave us the radian. So I would find 5 pi over 4 on my unit circle, which is right here. If this is 5 pi over 4, cosine is the first value, or the x value. So our answer is negative square root of 2 over 2. Okay, for, so that's what we, for any um, angle or radian on the unit circle, you can do that. Tangent, however, um, notice tangent's not there. Tangent is given by sine divided by cosine, or think of that as your y value divided by your x value, or your rise over your run. Tangent uses a lot of different applications with slope because of that. So, if I want to find tangent of 7 pi 6, first I would need to find sine of 7 pi over 6, and then cosine of 7 pi over 6. So I get my unit circle out, go to 7 pi 6, which is right here, and I would do the sine, which is the y value, that goes on the top, so negative 1 half, divided by the cosine, which is negative square root of 3 over 2. So, that looks messy because we have a fraction divided by a fraction. But remember, whenever you have a fraction divided by a fraction, you can do keep, switch, flip. So I'm going to keep the top one, which is negative 1 half, change it to a multiply sign, and then flip this to the reciprocal so that I get a negative 2 over the square root of 3. Well, the two negatives will just cancel and make a positive, and then we get... 1 times 2 on the top, and then 2 times the square root of 3 on the bottom. Well, those two 2's can cancel, so that I have 1 over the square root of 3. But again, we don't like square roots on the bottom. So to get rid of that square root, I have to times it by the square root of 3 in the bottom and the top. So that square root of 3 times square root of 3 just equals 3, and that square root goes away. And then 1 times the square root of 3 is just the square root of 3. So that would be your answer. So that is how you can get any tangent value by hand by just getting the sine value divided by the cosine value. But I know that that is kind of annoying. So 
I do have all the tangent values here for you. This table is a little confusing um, because it gives you the degrees and the radians. Think of that as being like your label. So your tangent values are right here. Let me just kind of highlight that in green. Um, and then it repeats. So this is like the top half of the circle and then it goes down to the bottom half of the circle and your tangent values are right here as well. Um, so I know that's kind of a confusing table, but that's because they wanted to give you the degree and the reading that goes with it. So remember 30 degrees in pi 6, that's the same place. And the value there would be square root of 3 over 3. If you want, you can go and add your tangent values around your unit circle. Maybe do it in like a different color though, so you know what that is. So like tangent of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 3. So I'm going to do that in green. I'll do square root of 3 over 3. And then tangent of 45 degrees is 1. And then tangent of 60 degrees is square root of 3. And you could just keep going around. Notice that some tangent values are undefined. And that's because we can't divide by 0. At this point, I would do sine divided by cosine and have 1 divided by 0, which we're not allowed to do. So tangent is undefined at the top of the unit circle and then also again at the bottom whenever x is zero it's going to be undefined um but i'm not going to do all of that on the video if you want you can go through and finish labeling your tangent values and maybe i'll just say that that's the green ones I kind of have a little key there tangent is in green um and use this little table for that but that is your unit circle so your homework is going to be problems like this where you're just given a sine, you're given a cosine, you're given a tangent, and they want you to just get the exact value. So not the decimal, but the exact fraction with the radicals and the square roots in them. Hopefully that is okay and you guys feel good about that. Let me know if you have any questions. Again, I will link some videos with tips and tricks on how to memorize the unit circle, um, but you'll want to keep this handy for the next unit. Um, and. You'll be good. So let me know if you have any questions. Hope you guys are doing okay. See ya.